Hi everyone, welcome to English with Lena. Today I'm going to read a couple of short stories so you can practice listening to English. Lena mến chào quý vị và các bạn. Hôm nay theo lời yêu cầu, Lena sẽ đọc uh, hai câu chuyện ngắn của tiếng Anh để quý vị tập nghe và tập hiểu. The first story is a Buddhist traditional story called When the Birds Became Friends. When the birds first flew in the sky, they were not friends. One bird would say to another, I am better than you, and soon they would start to shout and fight. But one day, the pheasant met the crow and just didn't feel like arguing. So, instead of picking a fight, the pheasant said, Crow, you are better than me. The crow was very surprised and very happy to hear what the pheasant said. So, to be polite, he answered, No, pheasant, you are a better bird than I am. And they sat down together on a tree branch and began to talk. After a while, The pheasant said, Crow, I like being with you. I like you too, pheasant, the crow said, and they decided to live together in a big tree. The longer they stayed together, the more the two birds liked each other, and the more they treated each other with kindness. All the other birds saw how the pheasant and the crow stayed together and didn't yell or fight. Finally, some of the birds decided to see if the pheasant and the crow really were friends. When the crow was away, they came and asked the pheasant, Why do you stay with that awful crow? You shouldn't say such things, the pheasant told them. The crow is a better bird than I am and he kindly lets me live with him in this tree. The next day, the pheasant was away, and the troublesome birds came to see the crow. Crow, they asked him, why do you stay with that awful pheasant? Please don't say that, said the crow. The pheasant is a better bird than I am, and he kindly lets me live with him in this tree. The birds saw that the pheasant and the crow really did care about each other. They said to themselves, instead of fighting, why can't we be like the pheasant and the crow? And from then on, all the birds knew how to become friends. The next story is also a traditional Buddhist story, and it's called The Little Fish and the Snake Bully. Once there lived in the sacred river Ganges of India, a big water snake. He used to hide underneath a rock and look for a fish swimming by. Then the snake would dart out from under the rock, grab the fish in its mouth, and eat it. The snake always took the fish by surprise and always got to eat it. One day, when the snake was swimming in the river, he saw a big school of very small fish eating their meal together. How fortunate I am today, said the snake to himself. I have so many fish right here for me to eat. And the snake opened his mouth very wide and swam into the middle of all the fish. He was expecting to catch the fish as easily as he usually did. I'm going to eat them all up, the snake said. But before he could eat even one of them, the whole school of fish surrounded the snake and started biting him. They bit the snake from head to tail and made him bleed all over. The snake was afraid that the tiny fish would end up killing him. So he swam away as quickly as he could to the river bank. The snake was in great pain and lay down to rest. 
Near him, he saw a big green frog who was lying on a rock and getting warm in the afternoon sun. The snake called out, My dear sir, just look at what those fish did to me. Does it seem right to you that they should attack me in such a way? The big green frog looked at the bloody snake and croaked out in reply, You are just a bully, used to sneaking up on the fish one at a time. Now you've found out that together the little fish are stronger than you. Instead of complaining, my good snake, you might think about being grateful to them for letting you off so easily and giving you a chance to change your ways. The next story is a traditional Chinese story, and it's called There's a Time for Everything. Long ago in China, everyone in a family had something important to do. It was the same in heaven, and when things were done properly, all went well. One day, the old ruler of heaven was called on business to a faraway part of the realm. He could not attend to his regular duties, so before he left, he told the old mother of heaven, I'm going to be away for three days. Now it's up to you to look after things on the earth. Just remember that all you need to do is to grant whatever wishes you hear people make. The old mother of heaven happily agreed. What a pleasant assignment to have, she thought. And with that, she left the palace, climbed on a cloud, and traveled until she came to a big river. Just at that moment, a sailor on a boat looked up and said, If only there were a strong wind, then I could sail whenever I wanted. The old mother of heaven immediately commanded the wind to blow and continued on her way. In a little while, she was passing a larger pear orchard when she heard someone crying to the heavens, Please stop this terrible wind. If it keeps blowing, it will knock down all the pears before they are ripe and we'll have nothing to pick. This was too much to bear for the old mother of heaven, and she went back to her palace. The next morning, She mounted the cloud and returned to listen to wishes again. Soon she heard an old farmer saying, May there be rain sent today. With rain I can plant my bean seeds and they will grow. So the old mother of heaven made a heavy rain to fall the whole day long. But in the evening, on her way home, she heard a deep sighing voice. Oh, how I wish the weather would clear up. If this rain doesn't stop, all the ginger I'm trying to dry may end up rotting instead. The old mother of heaven was overcome with confusion and once more rode the cloud back to her palace. On the third day, The old mother of heaven stayed in her room without going out to hear wishes at all. At last, the old ruler returned from his journey. The old mother of heaven was most sorry about what had happened. What could I have done differently? she asked him. It isn't really so difficult, the old ruler answered kindly. In fact, it's rather easy when you've learned the way of things. You just need to send a strong wind over the rivers and a gentle one on the pears. Make it rain in the night for the beans to grow and let the sun shine in the day for the ginger to dry. When all is right with heaven and earth, everyone's good wishes come to be. The old mother of heaven understood, and she smiled once more. Still, she said, I only wish you had told me about all this from the very beginning. 
We'll see you next time on English with Lena.